Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we are going to look at the Peppermint 10 release today. Um, just having a quick look. Now, some people that have already looked at it have indicated that there's really not a lot of changes. And what there's not really a lot of is changes that you see, but there's actually a great number of things under the hood that we can spot within the release notes. So, of course, you can get to their website at peppermintos.com. Uh, this is actually one of the great things about Peppermint is they still support the 32-bit and the 64-bit. And unless they've changed something, you should be able to go into the shop and actually, maybe they don't have, oh yeah, um, the Peppermint uh, USB stick. So if you do not have the ability to download uh, and prepare your own ISO, you can actually order one from them that's verified. So it says that um, that they, um, the sticks are Still coming just because this release is brand new so they just don't have their the release sticks out yet so you can come over here and see what peppermint is it's basically this amalgam of uh, several several elements from cinnamon several elements from um, xfce and i think it's lxde as well although they're kind of phasing some of those lxde items out as i remember some versions have had uh um, Thun uh, Thunar, I believe. Um, but actually the one I have, which is seven and the current one, which is 10 all runs Nemo. So I think somewhere around the line, they use Thunar for a version or two. Uh, but Nemo is going to be your file manager, which is great. That is my favorite file manager. And then they did some other adjustments. So if you actually look at the release notes, this is where you'll spot the things that are a little bit different. So ultimately they used a different kernel path. Um, which will eventually upgrade to the 5x kernel branch. So if you are looking for needing the latest kernel, this one will actually upgrade to the latest kernel automatically as soon as that is ready. They have also have NVIDIA graphics card drivers installed if you select the, the option to install third-party drivers and software. So if you're running NVIDIA, you might have a better experience as it's going to install those now automatically, which is a new feature. So the other thing that they did is they have now isolated SSBs in Chromium, Chrome, and Vivaldi. Firefox has always been isolated. And there's some new settings for the font GUI. Everything else is mostly just basic app, app, uh, app um, uh, upgrades and things like that. So what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and have a look at the OS itself. Okay, so here we are in the OS, and I kind of recall this wallpaper being very similar to what it was. Uh, so if we come on over here, let's sort of about system. Uh, let me see if there's just a system. Make sure I actually installed the right version. Um, eh, can't seem to find it. Anyway, I did install it from our um, from the uh, new ISO. See here with HTOP, it's only running on 3.5 megab uh, megabytes, 347 megabytes. So um, that is that is good. So everything else that you're going to notice out of the box is pretty much the same. Uh, and that's why people said there's not a lot of changes. Now, if you are new to Peppermint, we're just going to go over some basic items on this system. Um, they did not do one of the things that I've asked them to do. I'm so sad about it. Um, they, I know they were talking about it. So what my big issue is, is I like to see your home, your network, your documents, things like that on the desktop. So desktop icons do work out of the box. So you can right click on the desktop. You can add things, um, open as root, whatever. But to get your desktop icons, what you need to do is go into your Peppermint settings, go into tweaks, and you actually have to manage your decon editor. And this is something I would have, they have so many amazing settings. I would just love if they put a little application to toggle on or off your desktop icons. Um, so to actually get to here, you want to load this guy up. You want to go to org, Nemo, desktop, and inside of here, this is where you have your desktop icons. So there's your computer. Here's your home, which is one of them that I like. And if we come down, here is your network, which I like my network icon being there. And uh, there should be a trash as well. There's volumes, which is if you have a USB uh, mounted. So if you need those icons on there, that's how to do it. I would really love it if they put that setting in there, but you know, it just wasn't priority enough for them. Uh, everything else, though, they have a lot of different, uh, a lot of different look and feel. So just differences inside of your, uh, your desktop settings here. So uh, there's just a lot of settings and controls. 
uh, your various tweaks. We can reset everything. So if you do something goofy, you can go ahead and reset it back to back to normal. Here's your hardware. We have additional drivers. If you're having issues with a Wi-Fi card or anything else, loading up this additional drivers is going to search for drivers. This is, of course, the software and updater tool from Ubuntu. So we can see here we have a VirtualBox driver uh, that it says we could use, which we're not going to bother with that right now. But that's where it would be if you had some proprietary software inside of there. Um, inside of your network, um, I'm not sure why SSBs are inside of that. Um, so this is actually an a, a application. Let's look at the SSB application. So this is actually an ICE application. So ICE is really one of those standing features of Peppermint. You can install this on other systems, but originally if you go back to the philosophy of Peppermint, the idea behind Peppermint was a Linux kind of, like a Linux version of a Chromebook, which is like a net powered item. This is why if you come in here, even though I've installed the full setting and you go down to Office, you'll see Microsoft Excel, Microsoft OneNight, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word. You see the Gmail, the Google Calendar. These are all ICE applications. So if you boot one of these guys up, what it's going to do is it's going to open up your a, uh, an ICE application, which is an isolated uh, it's an isolated version of a web browser that you pick. The default is Firefox. You can pick Chrome, Chromium, or Vivaldi as well. It's going to boot you right onto the online place where if you were to have a Microsoft Office account where you could log in here and do documents online, this is what it is. The reason for this is because Peppermint in its original philosophy was a answer to Chromebooks, which that's exactly the way Chromebooks ran. However, it is a full-featured system, so it's infinitely better. So you can actually come over here and you can remove all these guys. So there's an online um, user guide. So if we want, we can just go ahead and remove uh, some of these. So a lot of these games that they have installed are actually all online games. I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the stuff from the evil corporations. So the Microsoft and the Googliness, we're going to go ahead and, and do that. Let's see, did I get them all? Oh. I got Microsoft Excel. So you can just go in here to the list and just remove them. All right, so now if I come down here under my uh, Office, well, Office has disappeared because I've gotten rid of everything that is Office. All right, so we can actually create one. So I'll just go ahead and do a, um, actually, we're just going to call this one switched to Linux. And then a web address. Let's go to your web address. So let's type in my switch to Linux there. And then where do you want this in the menu? We'll go ahead and put it under internet and then we can select an icon or use the site favicon. So I'll go ahead and do this. Now we can create it with an isolated browser profile. Now what this means is that an isolated browser profile, it basically it keeps this profile separate from everything else. So if you wanted to log into a banking system and keep the banking cookies all isolated from the rest of the system, you could do this and it's going to isolate those cookies out so that Google can't see who what bank you're doing business with. So we're not going to bother with that right now. We'll just go ahead and hit apply. You need to uh, give it a second. It'll finish out. So now under my internet, you'll see that I have this switch to Linux option inside my menu. And if you load this guy up, it's simply going to go right to switch to Linux page. So you can create those different icons for any of your, your favorite things, any online applications, like I said, banking applications. In fact, man, I might actually go ahead and switch my banking computer to this because it's actually getting old and I need to redo it soon anyway, and I hate Ubuntu. Uh, the version I have, the new Ubuntu, is really good. Um, the version I have is real bad. Uh, but anyway, those are ICE applications. So you can add or remove them here, so now that will appear in my list. The other cool thing Peppermint has uh, out of the box is they have an ad blocker, so you can see the advert blocker. What this is actually going to do is, you have to enter your password first. What this is actually going to do is it's going to edit your hosts file. So before we actually do this, I'm going to go ahead and boot up a terminal. And let's see if I can make this terminal bigger. Uh, let's do sudo nano etsy hosts. All right. So here's what my host file currently looks like. 
so there's nothing in it outside of your basics. So what this guy is actually going to do is it goes online to the different sources. So, so unblock, yoga.org. So these are just three different services. And it's going to add all these things into your host file, which is going to be a very good ad blocking system. So now um, let's go ahead and say, well, actually, let's cancel just in case it's still doing something. I don't think it is, but let's do that one more time. Yes. And so now what you'll see is now our host file is full of these different things. So the it's basically going to go through there, and anytime there's an update to that system, it's going to go ahead and update your host file. So that is what your that is what your uh, ad blocker is going to do. It works the same way as the ha the ad blocker like the ad blocker host file system that I have on mine. So that is some of the the features. Uh, one of the settings that they have tweaked and fixed is we have our font DPI settings. I know a lot of people ask about these. So we can go ahead and adjust our font DPI settings like this. Maybe I should have done that earlier so we could have all uh, seen a little bit better. But anyway, that is what um, that is what we have. We have the flexibility of several of the cinnamon cinnamon features. So we have our Mint Update Manager. We have um, I don't think our software. Let's see what software manager we have. I don't remember which software manager we've ever had. I thought sometimes they were pulling it from the Linux Mint one. So yeah, this is actually the new Linux Mint software manager. So we, I guess they're supporting flat packs out of the box. Um, we also have everything else involved in the, uh, in the Linux Mint's world in that respect. But we also have Synaptic Package Manager for those that want to use Synaptic. So there's a variety of tools, be it the very basic user level, the more moderate user level, or of course the advanced just use your terminal inside of your platform there. So everything else, now again, I installed the, the full version. There's a minimal install, which doesn't actually reduce a lot of things. You'll see that this has a lot of the system tools that I really like, uh, which makes it a, a, very good, a very good option for uh, anybody needing a complete and full system setup. So that is Peppermint in a nutshell. So has it really uh, has it really changed? I think a lot of the changes you are going to see are changes that are all under the hood, uh, but they're all under the hood changes that are very beneficial. You know, getting that Linux kernel five is good for a lot of people, particularly on newer hardware. So this is my opinion is going to support a wider range of newer hardware. But we don't see a whole lot of changes in the user interface. Now, if you currently are running Peppermint, should you take the time to upgrade? Only if there's something giving you a problem on your current system. I personally, am on my writing computer, I still use Peppermint 7. It gives me absolutely zero problems. It works perfectly well. I'm not going to shake the boat by installing anything else. Everything on that works perfectly fine. If you're running it, you love Peppermint, and you're in a situation where you really want to, uh, you have something that's not working right, it's definitely worth the upgrade. If you're installing a new computer, definitely go with the Cinnamon 10 release. It is a very good, uh, very good system. So let me know what you think. Uh, do you use Peppermint? What's your uh, favorite part, least favorite part about it? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.